Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, C.Z. Matthews Butsine. Uh, I'm a South African uh, based in Ghana. I'm an educationist, education activist, and inclusive education enthusiast. I also consider myself a Pan-Africanist. And in my opinion, I strongly and firmly believe that there's a dire need for a revolution in the field of education, particularly in Africa. I mean, I have taught in South Africa, I've taught in Kingdom of Bahrain, the Arab Republic of Egypt, and um, currently teaching in Ghana. And I came to a realization that in Africa, our curriculum is not designed or written for us. So if I may give an example, when I was in high school, I had to learn about the French Revolution. I mean, I, I could not comprehend, I could not relate, I did not know who the French are or where it's located geographically. And then I was very fortunate or unfortunate uh, that, you know, I, I studied uh, teaching and I specialized in history. And, you know, um, I, I, I actually thought of having a different approach to make sure that my students understand the whole concept of French Revolution. So when I started teaching, I first contextualized so I explain to my students what, what, what a revolution is and make some practical example from our communities. For example, if people are, are dissatisfied or they are disgruntled, you know, and then, you know, they, they, a revolution is, is, is likely to, to, to come up. So, um, and that made me realize that, you know, um, we, we, we are not um, doing justice to, to, to African children. And to this day, uh, we know we are still teaching the curriculum, which is not uh, which is not for us or by us, which is not relevant. So I strongly, firmly believe that as 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 African state, uh, we need to come together and design and write a curriculum uh, which speaks for us, which is what um, myself and uh, other uh, education activists we are doing. Um, we have brought teachers last, actually this year, we had our first international teacher training where we brought teachers from, you know, Ghana, South Africa, Botswana to come together and discuss, you know, issues around, you know, around education and how we can best, um, I mean, how can, we can share uh, our best practices. So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, and then this is also scaffolded. I, I believe that if we teach children from like an Afrocentric perspective, it will help them, you know, to uh, innovatively and creatively solve the problems or the challenges that are in Africa. And that is scaffolded by what Dr. Kwame Nkrumah said, that it's only Africans that can uh, solve uh, African problems. Wow. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> See, you know, every time you talk about education, it just really gets me thinking. That's, I mean, I'm an amazing perspective. Yeah, 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 I agree yeah. with you a thousand percent, you know. Uh, very often I yes, question sir. myself, yeah. you know, I question, so usually when I go to my children's school, you know, maybe they have an open day, mm -hmm. I don't look at the books, you know, because I'm not really interested yes, in the books. I'm more interested in character development, you know, leadership, social, um, social skills, social communication, because these are things that people need in the real world. You find if you look around mm -hmm. you, most of the time, the best student in your class, many times, is not usually the most successful if you go back 10 years after. Right? Right. So that says something about yeah. the educational system. Right? Right, it does. If you yeah. look at it. So the truth is we're, we're almost educating ourselves for the West. Well, it's said by the West and yeah. for the West. You know, we're not educating well, for Africa's problems. Educated. Africa's problems are not American problems. Yeah. And we're not educating mm -hmm. for, you know, problem solving. Because if we were and we understood that the problems we're solving are African problems, then our solutions or the solutions that we prefer, you know, would generally be different. So I think we should decolonize just our education, but we should decolonize, we should decolonize Africa, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, holistically, yeah. you know, yeah, <laughs> generally. Anyway, yeah. He was talking about the <laughs> history of Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba. Yeah. Who again did you mention there? Yeah, yeah. Thomas yeah. Sankara. Yeah. Thomas Sankara, very mm. important. Very, Thomas very Sankara. important. Yeah. You know, Sankara. I mean, you know, instead now, of learning about your, your Lenin and Stalin and, you know, the Cold War and World War, but I mean, we have we have a beautiful history in, 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 in Africa. I mean, you know, the ideology that those men you mentioned carried, I think they were the one that were, was, you know, meant to take Africa 
come forward and unite, you know, dismantle, uh, you know, what, what colonialism has brought, the division in Africa. Well, I, I agree with you, but I'm going to come from this angle. I still want to seek for a balance. For me, I'm a globalist. I have a globalist ideology, also a pan-African. I believe in Africa and also believe in globalization. I think people should be well educated enough to appreciate their background and also have global views. So you need to understand what, what happens in or happened in other climes and also what happened in your own area. Now, we are talking of Nigeria here, where this government was saying they want to scrap out history from the education curriculum. I don't know whether you're aware. Yeah. Because of they some so called I think they have already. Uh, because of so called controversies, mm. they think is a way of ensuring peace. How can you have lasting peace and unity and national cohesion when you don't even understand your, your history? Yeah. So I think as much as possible, it's true we need to understand our culture as Africans. We need to be educated in African sense. At the same time, too, it's not a wrong thing to learn what happens in other countries. There should be a balance between both. That's my opinion on this yeah, issue. Um, I still go back to the system, the systemic. reason why a minister of education will decide to scrap history <laughs> from education is because he, he's probably not supposed to have been there in the first place. Exactly. It was just a political appointment, you know. Yeah. So this man is not, politics thinking, with our education. He's not thinking straight. And then the reason why we have the problem, uh, CZ. Yes, CZ, yeah. John CZ, yeah. <laughs> the reason why we have the problem we're having with education is basically whole Africa, the, the development of Africa, like, the, like that rap group, was arrested. So it's arrested development. Something happened. We were progressing in a certain way, and somebody just stopped it and brought in something new. So the concept of education we have is not progressive. Mm. It is um, it's not necessarily regressive, but it is static. So what they brought, this is what they say is education. So we took it and we put it in a box. And then we stayed within the limitations of that box, which is why, for instance, if you're studying literature, you're going to see that contemporary poets, what they, if they're teaching you contemporary poets in literature in university today, you're going to see poets that are not alive. Yeah. And I'm wondering, but you're teaching literature and you're saying contemporary. And you show me people who wrote poetry in 1930. How is that contemporary? contemporary? This is all poetry. This is not um, contemporary. You know, so this, that's the problem. We took the thing and then we put it in a box and we're unable to open the box or, you know, raise the lines and expand the lines. We'll fail to do that thing. To me, that's a problem. So I agree with you. Yeah. There's need for a revolution, need for a change, need for, you know, things to, yeah. to move forward. Absolutely, absolutely agree. Yeah. yeah, and you know, just to, I mean, so I always, you know, crack this joke. So if you go to the to the universities in Nigeria, you know, lecturers have taught there for twenty or thirty years. They've used the same curriculum. They've used the same, same you know, the same scheme, and they're very proud about it. So you know, I've had this thing before you were born. That's the exact reason why you shouldn't throw it yeah, in the bin yeah. or get it burnt. Yeah, you know, but that's what we brag about. Or add to it. Had, or add they to don't it evolve. It. Expand it, evolve it, and that's, you know, reinvent and that's, it. That's the whole point about education, that's the research. That's the whole point of education. But these guys, you know, man. Anyway, yeah. that is where I'm going to praise uh, this P and OKK. I know what is this other man, this physics, Anya mm Koha. -hmm. The world were in secondary school. We did physics. We have M. Nelkon, M. Nelkon and Parker. These were British writers. Okay, British writers. They wrote, they wrote um, a physics I remember. textbook. Yes. Yeah. But P. and OKK yeah. and yeah. M. Nelkon, they came, yeah. they wrote it, but they used a, a, a much more applicable applicable to right. our locality. Right. So right. if right. you are studying physics with M. Nelkon, it's not as easy as studying with P. and OKK. That's right. If you I, want I to explain the concept of viscosity. School, we had both okay. books. We had, you know, we, uh, we, had, we had something that a foreigner wrote. And where something that yeah, local they, you know, so it was like I just didn't. So, good, so I mean, so it, it's nice when it's balanced, yes. right? That's that's the yeah. whole point of education. Yeah. It must be balanced, yeah, sure. Because you must ask yourself: Does a fourteen-year-old child in America does do they care about African culture? But what I learned right. is that the American guy doesn't even care about what's happening in the next county. He's just really, he's just yeah, really. He's mobile. Where, that's it. Extent, some of yeah. them, anyway, to some yeah. extent. Some, some of them, ninety-nine percent. But if you are groomed from leadership, if you are groomed for leadership in the U.S or these countries, you must be a globalist. L let me tell you what I mean. I, I remember um, I've been involved in but some global conferences. You, you must have a global agenda? Uh, yes, right. what I mean, global idea. You should global have. perspective. Uh, yeah, global, global perspective. Yeah. I have been opportune to meet with um, some of these young persons from 
mostly the Western world in conferences, when I see them, they know a lot about your country. Yeah, they know. Most times because yeah, they come they and know. do some research. Yeah. yeah, they do research. They want to learn. So when they are talking about Nigeria or Africa, they will meet me and we start talking about but it. You know, like, but they but have this information. But you know, but you so know, it's not wrong if, to if have theirs. If you go to Oshodi and you call any boy, he might be able to recite to me the names of all the American states. <laughs> well, in, in many cases, yes. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so those ones, only those ones who are supposed to be leaders. I'm talking about <laughs> normal, everyday people. Yeah, where they, they are just very the education. <laughs> you so just it's interesting that all the conversation today broad, is going broad, around broad, education, and, uh, education, yeah. education yeah. reinventing education. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think it's very If we yeah. can get education right, you know what I mean? Children have been at home for 10 months or something like that, or nine months or something like that. It eight just shows eight plus. months, eight months plus. It just shows you know, the posture and the position of this government and their attitude towards education. They don't value education. Right. So or anything that, else. Say it again. They don't value education. Or so, anything else. Or anything else. Yeah. You know, so if you can even get education right, if that's the only thing that we can get right, I think that we can start to make some progress. Education is not actually, only building red roofs, actually, red you know, roofs uh, classroom, right. or painting the university. Right. We are talking about quality yeah. things, infrastructure and other things. The material uh, that you, uh, exactly. you put in the yeah, children's policies and all yeah. those things. Policies as simple as allowing university students to work in, in firms and learn from them. Not when you are you want to apply for IT as an engineering student, some company will not accept you. No, we don't accept IT students. That's what they will tell yeah. you. Clearly, if we, I mean, if we start talking about this education, we will not <laughs> exhaust the topic. <laughs> All right. Uh, <coughs> thanks, gentlemen. Elijah Felix is next after the break. Please stay with us. <laughs>